Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Lady Legend, and in today's video, we're doing part two of the Rancho Super Guide. Today, we're gonna have a look at all of the brand new species added to Rancho. Five species we're gonna go through today, and we're gonna have a look at the best spots, best times to hunt, best weapons, collars, rare variations, diamond trophy ratings, and more. Everything you need to know to hunt absolutely every species in Rancho Del Arroyo. And if you do enjoy the video, guys, I'm gonna ask you to smash that like button. If you'd like to join this amazing community, just hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to click the notify bell and we're gonna head right into it. Now, let me know in the comments, guys, as we go through, if you do have questions about anything at all with Rancho and what you are most excited to hunt for on this amazing new map. And definitely check out part one of the super guide for all of the pre-existing species, whitetail, muleys, coyotes, and bighorn. And I will leave the link below the video. And we are gonna start out with the best loadout for Rancho and I am going to include all of the species in the loadout description. So any class four to eight rifle, I like to take the M1 or the 303, but any four to eight will work just fine. And that will be for the whitetail, bighorn, collar peccary, and for muleys. Then we have the 243, and that is for coyotes and for bobcat. Then we have the 22, and that is for pheasants, for Rio Grande turkeys, and for antelope jackrabbits. Lots of class one animals on this map. And then of course we have a shotgun. The Cuso or any shotgun will work. Now I have the Miller Model 1891 10 gauge with me, but the Cuso is a great shotgun. It is the weapon that comes with Rancho. It is a five shot shotgun. The only reason I'm not taking it out right now is because it does have a little bug in it. And I just want to let you guys know that if it doesn't shoot, just press the reload button and you should be fine to go ahead and use it. Now let's have a quick look at the stats. So for the Cuso, accuracy of 33, recoil of 82, reload speed of 29, and a hip shot of 88. And it is 45,000 in-game dollars to purchase the Cuso. It's a good shotgun. I really like it. So I always carry with me the Argus and the Hyperion scopes. I carry them both with me to every reserve. Then for collars, we have the Bleat Collar, and that's for Mule Deer and for Whitetail. The Grunt Collar works best for Whitetail. The Jackrabbit Collar, and that is for Coyotes and for Bobcat. The Wild Boar Collar for Collar Peccary. We have the Wild Turkey Crow Collar, and that elicits a vocal response from the turkeys so you can see where they are located. And then we do have the wild turkey mouth collar and that actually calls them in. And those are our lures for Rancho. I'm not sure about the scent eliminator, but I know the first aid kits aren't actually working right now. So I just wanted to mention that to you guys right now for this update. Not necessary to bring, but normally I do bring it with me. And then we have the Apex View and the Gen Zero binoculars. You'll find those in the high tech hunting pack. And I like to have those for night hunting and Coyotes drink at night, as do bobcats for part of the time, so you definitely need to bring those Gen Zeros with you. And that's our loadout. Now, I also wanted to mention that I do carry an extra three kilograms of space because I do have the pack mule skill, and I do highly recommend it. Three kilograms of extra space is game changing, and you'll find it under ambusher skills. Now, the first species we're gonna have a look at for today's guide is bobcats. And I am super excited to see these added to Rancho. They look absolutely, absolutely amazing. Now at the end of each segment for each species, guys, I am gonna share a hotspot map showing you exactly where the best spots are to find each of the species in today's guide. But you're basically gonna find bobcats on the entire left-hand side of the map. Now they do drink at least partially in the dark. They drink from four or 4.30 until seven or 7.30. So I like to set the time back to about 5 a.m. Sometimes I go out earlier. If you are gonna hunt them at night, definitely take with you the Gen Zero binoculars. Now bobcats go all the way up to level nine. You do need a nine legendary bobcat to find a diamond. And the diamond trophy rating for bobcats is 27.6. Now, since bobcats are only a class three species, we do not have a lot of weapon options, unfortunately. So we are stuck with using either the 243, the 223. You can take the Mosin or the Solikin out. That is definitely preferred by me over the 243, or you can use the air rifle. And that was W Lake. 
So now we are down on the coast and you do need to run the coast for bobcats to find all of their drink zones. Now these little inlets here, they're great places to check and you will find bobcats drinking all along the coast. Now if you are looking for a collar for bobcats, that collar would be the Predator Jackrabbit Collar. And if you are hunting bobcats in the dark, it is really hard to see their fur variation. Now there are many different fur variants for bobcats. Of course there is common, this one's common here. They are very pale, very light looking. It can be very hard to see. Now the different fur variations for bobcats include common, tan, brown and red, which are uncommon, blue, which has a 3.22% spawn rate, and then the two rares are melanistic and albino, and they both have a very low spawn rate, 0.03%. So to find a diamond blue would be a pretty cool trophy. Hey, that's for sure. Really nice when you have multiple bobcats in the same area. Just be careful not to blow out that zone. I actually didn't even realize that bobcats come in melanistic and albino, so I am super excited. We are definitely going to be grinding for both of those rare variations for bobcats. Let's see, this guy is a brown. It is really hard to tell their variation just from looking at them, especially from across the lake. It can be very hard to tell. And that looks like a red. I do really like the red. They're not as rare as the blue. You're going to find more reds but they are really pretty. That's a common. Very pale looking, very light. A little lighter than the tan, I'd imagine. But let's have a look at this one. So there's the red. They remind me of a little tiger. They don't have stripes, but they are super cool to look at, that's for sure. So this lake here is OK Lake, and you will find bobcats all around the perimeters of this lake. So this here, this is Lobster Lake. And this is another really amazing lake for bobcats. Several zones, several drink zones will be found all around this lake. And this is also a really great lake for whitetail as well. I find bobcats and whitetail like a lot of the same areas. Now, luckily, the bobcats don't spook the whitetail away too often, only once in a while. They usually are back a little further back resting when whitetail are drinking. And that guy is another brown, so they are pretty common, but they are very pretty. They look a little lighter than the red. And this here is Lobster Lake, and again, you'll want to drop a tent at this lake. Now, this lake here, this is what I call Heart Lake. It is sometimes very, very tough to see them. Now, I don't usually use the night vision scope. I'm not a big fan of it. I find it picks up a lot of glare, and there is quite a lot of fog in Rancho. So if you are on PC, guys, make sure to turn your fog off in the settings. Unfortunately, you cannot do that on console, but that's Heart Lake. And that brings us to the map. So here we have just about every lake on the left-hand side of the map. Basically, that is the desert biome, and you're going to want to check all of those lakes for bobcats, even along the coast. Now, the larger lakes will have more zones around them, but they are all awesome spots to check, especially if you're looking for that rare or diamond bobcat. Check all of these spots. Okay, so for our next new species, we're going to have a look at collared peccary. Now, collared peccary are a welcome addition to the Rancho map. We call them pigs, not pigs, because they actually are not actually pigs, apparently. <laughs> Now you will need the Gen Zero binoculars to hunt collared peccary in their drink zone. They drink from midnight or zero or 030 till three or 330. So in the dark, the entire drink zone. Now that guy is a brown. We are gonna go through all of the different variations of collared peccary, but there are several zones around most of the lakes that we're gonna visit them on today. You're not just gonna find one zone, you're gonna find several, and that's the top left lake. Now, even though it is dark with the Gen Zeros, you can see very, very well. It can be tough to pick out a rare, but you can see them pretty well. And that's a pretty nice big level four. And now he's dead. Now, collared peccary are a small critter, but they are actually a class four species. So that is good news because we are able to use any 
Class four to eight rifle, you can use the M1, the 303, the 30-odd six. Any four to eight rifle will do just fine on these guys. And this one is a dark gray and he's not too bad. Pretty nice gold. And that is OK Lake. Now another name for collared peccary is Havelina Hog. You can use them interchangeably, but there is a collar for collared peccary, even though they aren't pigs, the wild boar collar is the collar that will work for them. So this lake that we're on right here, this is Lobster Lake, and this is one of the very best lakes for collared peccary. You're gonna find many, many different drink zones all around this lake. And that's where you'll find it on the map. Also amazing for bobcats and for whitetail. And coyotes, come to think of it. So this lake here is Heart Lake. Definitely you'll wanna check here for collared peccary. And there are actually many different variations for them. Now, of course we have common, and then we also have gray. We have dark gray, dark brown, okra, and then the rares are leucistic, melanistic, and albino. That is a lot of different variations, my goodness. So this little lake here is the little crater lake, and it is just a tiny, tiny little lake, but it is definitely worth having a visit if you are looking for collared peccary. They love these little lakes on the left-hand side. They really do. And that is a common and not too bad. We do have a gold. Look at the little tiny lake there. So both of those little lakes will have collared peccary. There are just so many places to find collared peccary. I can't even show you all the spots in this guide. <laughs> just so many and look at all the... Look at all the collared peccary in that pack and look at them go. So many of them. So the hunting for collared peccary in Rancho is really good. They are not in short supply here. And this is the middle left lake. I guess we're gonna call that Wolfhead Lake. I don't have a name for that lake yet. That'll work just fine. And that does bring us to the map. Now, collared peccary drink at a lot of the same places as Bobcat do. So basically the left-hand side of the map, split the map in half and go to the left and you're gonna find collared peccary. Don't forget the tiny little lakes, Crater Lake and the lake above it, awesome for collared peccary. But I would start with the big lakes. So OK Lake at the top, all kinds of zones there. Lobster Lake right here. Another one with all kinds of different zones and W Lake at the bottom but all of those circled areas, all of those water sources will have collared peccary drinking. And that brings us to our next species for today's guide and that would be Rio Grande turkeys. Now I do apologize that I don't have a rolling R. I have never taken a Spanish lesson in my life. I am Canadian. But for Rio Grande turkeys, we are going to hunt them in their feed zones for the most part. I don't even think they have a drink time. If they do, I don't know what it is, but I have never seen them drinking at all in Rancho. Now this road at the bottom of the map is amazing. You are gonna find so many different feed zones here for Rio Grande turkeys. And they feed from four or 4.30 until seven or 7.30. And again, from seven or 7.30 until 11 or 11.30. So they have a nice long feed time in the morning. So definitely hit that road and you will find all kinds of turkeys and all kinds of other species as well. Now I have put together a location map and I am going to show you guys exactly where I have found most of my zones for turkeys so that you guys can hopefully easily find them as well. Now diamond for turkey is 4.6 just like it is for the Merriam turkeys in Silver Ridge Peaks. Now turkeys are a class one species so you can use any shotgun with birdshot you can use the 22 handgun or the 22 rifle for turkeys. So here I am using the Kuso. If you would like to take the Kuso out, if your Kuso does not fire, all you have to do is reload it and it should work just fine. Just remember to lead the shot. I am a lot better at this now than I am on a mouse and keyboard, but I'm still not awesome. Just keeping it real. <laughs> I know what I'm good at and what I'm not, and I'm not super awesome at shotgun hunting, but I am going to get better. So let's talk about the different variations for Rio Grande turkeys. So the most common would be common and buff, both with a 33% spawn rate. Then we have light buff and light brown. I think those would be considered uncommon. And then the rares are leucistic, melanistic, and albino. So that gives us lots of different turkeys to hunt for.
So all I did here was turn the time back to early in the morning and I did walk the roads and I found all kinds of turkey feed zones and that has been working for me all over the map. And that does bring us to the map. So what I've done here is I have put stars around locations where I have found quite a few turkey feed zones. But like I said, pick a road and walk the road, especially in certain areas, and you will come across a lot of different turkey feed zones. You will find them all over. They are not too hard to find. Now that brings us to our next species, which is antelope jackrabbits. Now these rabbits are so cool. I think these are my new favorite rabbit in the entire game. They just look totally different from every other rabbit species in the game. And hunting them in their feed zones is the way to go. So right now we are down here at the bottom right lakes and there are quite a few feed zones here for antelope jackrabbits. Now you will find them feeding. The best time to hunt them is four until seven or 7.30. Now all around the outskirts of this area, I did find quite a few feed zones. Now if you are looking for a diamond jackrabbit, they go diamond at 6.5 and they can go diamond at level 2 or level 3. So if you have a really big level 2, take a careful shot, it could be a diamond. If 6.5 falls in that trophy rating. Now because antelope jackrabbits are a class 1 animal, you can use any shotgun with birdshot on them, or you can use the 22 handgun or the 22 rifle. Those are your options. Or if you'd like to bow hunt them, you're going to use the 300 grain arrows. So this is the Kuso. I like to hunt them with the shotgun if I can. I haven't done a lot of hunting of them, but I am going to be very, very soon. And there are quite a few variations for antelope jackrabbits. So this female is gray. So you definitely want to check around the outskirts of these three lakes in the bottom right hand corner. Now unfortunately there are no collars for antelope jackrabbits. But there are many many different variations. So the most common are grey and common. And then there is mottled and dark brown. Those would be your uncommon. And the rare variations are melanistic and albino. Now this area out in the open west of Ghost Lake right beside the windy road is awesome for jackrabbits for all kinds of feeding animals. And that does bring us to the map. So I have put stars in areas where I am finding quite a lot of feed zones for antelope jackrabbits. Just like turkeys, if you grab a road early in the morning and you start walking it, you are more than likely to find a bunch, but you will find them all over the map when they're feeding. And that brings us to the last and possibly the most exciting species in today's guide, and that is pheasants. Now, we do have a whole new game mechanic in Rancho for pheasants. They do have to be shot off of the ground. They cannot be shot while they're grounded. Or there will be no score. No score at all. So don't shoot that diamond pheasant on the ground. You do have to get them to flush. Now, always remember to leave your shot. But I love this new mechanic. It makes it way more challenging and way more fun to hunt pheasants. Now I find whistling does not get them to flush, but it can still be very useful to use your whistle when you're hunting. Usually when you whistle, you can elicit a vocal response from them that can help you to figure out where they actually are located. So whistling is still very handy, even though it doesn't get them off the ground. Now, as you come closer to pheasants, you will notice that they will Go defensive and they will actually go into brush and try to hide, but they won't actually flush. Now to get them to flush, walk right up to them, get close to them, and they will eventually take flight and that's when you want to get them. Do not shoot them on the ground. Sometimes when you're trying to get them just as they're landing, that's when it gets tense. Now I do like to hunt pheasants in their early feed zones and the best ones are 4 until 8 or 8.30 and then again from 8 until 11 or 11.30. And this guy is a common and aren't they beautiful? They did an amazing job on the pheasants. Look at the detail they have put into these models. I am super impressed. And this windy road, you will find so many different feed zones for pheasant on both sides. Travel this road early in the morning and that is definitely a hot spot for pheasants and for jackrabbits as well. 
You'll actually be surprised at how many different species you will find out here feeding early in the morning. So now I'm out here around W Lake, but this area, all around the different roads, all around, this is Lobster Lake. You're gonna find all kinds of pheasant feed zones. Just traveling the roads early in the morning, it's shocking how many animals you will find. But right down here, I found several, several feed zones for pheasants. So because pheasants are a class one bird, you definitely wanna stick with any shotgun with birdshot or the 22 handgun or rifle. And if you're looking for a diamond, they go diamond at 20.3. And this is W Lake. Now there are quite a few rare variations for pheasants and let's talk about those right now. So for male pheasants, there is common and then there is molting and gray. Molting and gray are uncommon. And then we have leucistic, melanistic and albino. And the only difference for females is there are no molting variation for females. So there are lots of different variations to hunt for for pheasants and that is very exciting. I love the new mechanic. I'm super excited. I actually would love to see it implemented for ducks and for geese. I would totally be okay with that. And once you guys have tried out the new mechanic, let me know in the comments, what do you think of it? Would you also like to see it implemented for other bird species in the game? And that does bring us to the map. Now, all of the start areas are areas where I have found several feed zones for pheasants, but this is not an all-inclusive map. I am not saying that you won't find zones in other areas. You probably will. But this will definitely get you started with quite a lot of different pheasant feed zones. So head out early in the morning. I do recommend starting around 5.30 at daybreak. And they feed at those zones until 8 or 8.30 and then again until 11 or 11.30. So you have a nice big window to hunt them in their feed zones. So those are our five new species in Rancho. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you learned lots. Definitely remember to check out part one of the super guide for all of the four existing species, whitetail, muleys, bighorn, and coyotes. And I will leave the link in the description below. If you did enjoy the video, guys, I'm going to ask you to do one thing, smash that like button. And if you'd like to join us for more daily Call of the Wild content, join this awesome community by hitting that subscribe button. Don't forget to click the notify bell and we'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, guys. If you guys would like to check out the super guides for all of the other reserves, click right here.